So first of all, I would like to say good morning to all of the Dharma mentors here, as well as everyone who has come to listen to this teaching today. Dharma Oh, uh, uh, did everybody hear that or should I repeat it? Repeat, okay. Uh, so first of all, I would like to say good morning to all the Dharma mentors here today, as well as everyone who came to listen to the teaching. Yeah, uh, This is uh, my second time to this center. Uh, the topic of today's teaching will be uh, gum, the four dharmas of Gampopa or the four uh, roots of Gampopa. Uh, whether we refer to him as Gampopa or by his other name of Dakpo Rinpoche, uh, he was and is an extraordinarily important and inconceivable lama in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. Uh, generally, in terms of uh, Tibetan Buddhist lineages, he's classified as a, a Kadyu Lama. But he's also considered as a Lama of the entire Tibetan tradition. And among his teachings are many that are extremely wonderful and profound. Of the most condensed of these teachings is this one, the four dharmas of Gampopa. And a teaching of his that is slightly more uh, extended or comprehensive than this is the jewel ornament of liberation. Uh, among his uh, various compositions, though, are many that are even more extensive than these. Uh, the contents of these teachings are considered to be in Tibet extremely profound uh, teachings and mind trainings. So everyone regards these as uh, teachings with uh, great capacity to benefit the mind. Uh, there are four or five uh, collected works of Gampopa. I'm not sure whether they all exist in English version, but I'm sure that some of them do. And if you were all able to read these works, it would be truly wonderful. As for myself, I read them a lot. Uh, uh, and uh, in general, in the uh, Drigong uh, tradition, there are many great uh, instructions and uh, on the practice of uh, Buddhism. Uh, 
공부하는 거래. Uh, in times gone past, it was uh, quite rare to be able to get hold of these works in Tibetan. Uh, but these days, with uh, digitization, uh, they're easy to get hold of. So, uh, as for the uh, Uh, instructions, the personal instructions of uh, these lamas, I usually read them like this in this form. And they're really very excellent. They just have uh, such great benefit for the mind. So when I say uh, truly excellent, I am uh, basically uh, meaning that they have uh, great benefit, to, great capacity to benefit the mind. And it's possible but that some of these do exist in English. And if they do exist, then all of you really must read them. If um, they're so wonderful that if you didn't read them, it really would be uh, a loss. So the main lama of this center uh, is Gachin Rinpoche. Gachin Rinpoche is the main lama Gamba 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 Giba Oh let's say mm-hmm. uh, Gachin Rinpoche is an extremely important lama lama among the elderly lamas of Tibet And as a lama as a dharma practitioner is really a fully qualified Uh, practitioner and is a very humble practitioner too and a person, a being who has studied extraordinarily well and someone who really practices the true content of the Dharma and And when I say that Gachin Rinpoche is an important teacher, it's not because you know, he's a lama or he's a chukul with a particular title. This is not the reason that I say this. Uh, the reason that I do call him important is because he is someone who practices, actually implements in practice the teachings exactly as they are in the Mahayana tradition. Uh, now he is uh, quite advanced in years. And of course, all of us uh, pray and hope and aspire that elderly lamas such as him will uh, live for a long time. But in any case, uh, while he is still here with us, everyone should seek empowerments from him and oral instructions from him. Of course, in the future, there will be other good lamas like him. However, whether or not there will be many such lamas, we can't say for sure. As for the uh, top rate uh, lamas from Tibet, most of them live outside Tibet. 
Chuda Damgada Wanda so Manchishu Jitamkuya Maris. So as for uh, practitioners inside Tibet, uh, most are not able to receive teachings, empowerments, instructions from these lamas. But you, uh, everyone here, is able to seek empowerments, teachings and instructions from these lamas. And this really is your good fortune, your, your good karma. So it's really important that you uh, don't uh, fail to take advantage of this opportunity. So many of Tibet's best lamas have already passed on to the higher realms, they've passed away. And there's uh, not many left uh, that are like uh, Gachin Rinpoche or of his cohort. And so if you really do wish to practice the Dharma, it's so important to uh, go before these Lamas and seek teachings from them to really seize the opportunity that exists. Of course, after these lamas have passed away, yes, uh, good lamas will still continue to arise. However, whether or not they will uh, occur in this uh, short lifetime of ours is uh, quickly uh, is we very difficult to say. So it's really important that in respect of these wonderful elderly lamas that we are really uh, aware that they are rare beings and that our opportunity to meet with them too is rare as well. So everyone, please bear this in mind. So we're going to begin now with today's teaching. So the uh, topic of today's teaching is Gampopa's four dharmas. And as uh, to these, uh, this, this root text, there are many different explanations. Because the uh, amount of words in the original text are very few. In fact, there are virtually no texts that contain fewer words than this text. It is very condensed. Uh, However, in terms of the content, it, it's extremely profound. So as to this content, there are really two different strands of explanation or commentary. Uh, one of these uh, follows, or is that uh, which Gampopa, um, or how Gampopa explained it himself, or how he said it himself. Uh, there is a uh, small uh, commentary uh, that goes hand in hand with the root text that was uh, written by Gampopa. 
so uh, what this text is is a very um, simple and convenient uh, uh, presentation of the varying levels of Dharma practice that uh, an individual practitioner requires. And then the other strand of um, explanation of these teachings is uh, from those teachers who came after Gampopa and composed commentaries on his root text. So within these uh, few lines of text, the entirety of uh, the Buddhist teachings are encompassed. And uh, this uh, small text sets out the paths of practice for practitioners of three different levels. And when we say the three levels of practitioners, uh, what we mean is practitioners of lesser average and greater potent propensities and capacities. And corresponding with these three different levels of practitioners are three different levels of path. So a lesser path, an average path, and a greater path. And within the three paths of uh, the three practitioners, all of the Buddhist paths are encompassed. And there's uh, nothing in the Buddhist teachings that is, uh, or in the teachings of the Buddha, that is not encompassed in these three paths of the three different levels of practitioner. The name. Uh, uh, there is a more vast or comprehensive explanation of this. But uh, rather than explaining it in this very vast or comprehensive way, today we are going to be looking at this text primarily uh, from uh, Gampopa's perspective, and that is that of the practice of an individual practitioner. Because if we teach from this perspective, then this has benefit to everyone's personal practice. And has a benefit to everyone's mind. So, in presenting the teachings today in a simple uh, way that is closely connected to our uh, practice, uh, this is uh, similar or approaches the way that Gama or Gama Gampopa presented his own teachings, and it is also of benefit to our practice. So of the uh, of the four 
uh, dharmas of Gampopa. The first of them is to grant blessings for worldly virtue to turn to the pure dharma. Uh, so within the uh, original Tibetan language version of this line of the text, it literally translates as grant blessings for the Ch to turn to the Ch. And Ch in Tibetan means the Dharma. So in this line, we need to do, differentiate what the first Ch is and the second Ch is. Then in Gambopa, Songa Nala Yang, then in Yang, Tsu Zhenba Chu Yorez, then Gang Rezina, Chu Chu Jin the Machina, so what is this? Chu Chu Jin the Machina, and that's what Chu Jumna, Koran Chu Tat, Nandun Tat, the Dubgore, Mato, but Chu Di Chu Yang Tapa Machinas, Machina, so what is it? So in Gampopa's um, explanation or commentary on his own text, um, he wrote that it is necessary for us to practice the correct dharma or the proper dharma rather than engage in action that is incorrect or unvirtuous. And so Gampopa said was it's necessary for, pract- for us to practice the Dharma in a correct way. Failing to do this, the da- practicing the Dharma in an incorrect way will lead us to descend to the lower realms. <laughs> Yeah, So you might ask, why is it if we practice the Dharma that we might descend to the lower realms? Uh, the reason uh, that this is said is if we simply borrow the word Dharma uh, to say that we are practicing the Dharma, but in actual fact only uh, undertake worldly actions, then uh, for this reason one might descend to the world, the lower realms. This is the reason behind it. <laughs> Uh, within the history of the religions in the world, there are many instances of uh, people carrying the name of a particular religion in order to undertake actions of um, all variety of kinds. Every single religion has this kind of phenomena in their history, and Buddhism is no exception. And it's not just a historical phenomenon either. Still, in our current world, all over the place, this sort of thing is taking place. So 
So, for example, people who uh, use the Dharma to deceive others, for example, by claiming themselves to be a high lama when they're not, or claiming to be a chukul when they're not, or claiming to have uh, specific magic powers when they don't. And also there are often many conflicts uh, between religions and among religions themselves. Uh, interreligious conflict is, has been very common in the world's history. If we think about Buddhism, probably this has been uh, slightly uh, less than in other religious um, traditions. But it's certainly not the case that this has never occurred in Buddhism either. Uh, so that's history, but uh, nowadays these things still happen. Uh, so uh, even if it's not uh, instances of large conflict, then even uh, situations where religious traditions slander each other, then this is a situation of uh, uh, not being in accordance with the uh, proper Dharma, as this first Dharma of Gampopa holds. So, not just words of slander, but also uh, thoughts of anger and jealousy at the level of the mind directed against religions is also um, behavior that is uh, not in accordance with uh, our uh, turning to the proper Dharma as the first Dharma holds. Out, oh yeah. mm. uh, so I uh, visited a small island uh, in Asia. And on this island, uh, most people uh, followed Islam. Uh, but there were a few Buddhists. Among these Buddhists, there were three kinds. And uh, one kind or one type of Buddhist among this group were followers of uh, uh, Theravada Buddhism. And then there was a group who were followers of the Sutric tradition of the Mahayana. And the third group were followers of uh, Tibetan Vajrayana. But the number of this third type, followers of Tibetan Vajrayana, were very, very small. But this small group of followers absolutely had no notion of being united and harmonious among each other. And uh, because uh, Okay, so those, uh, it was the, these three groups of Buddhists, this small group of Buddhists of three different kinds who were not united uh, in their outlook. Um, the Mahayana followers slandered the Theravada followers, saying that they uh, the yeah. So the Theravada followers were slandering the Mahayanas, saying that they weren't 
they weren't Buddhist. And then the uh, Theravada and Sutric Mahayana followers claim that the followers of Vajrayana were not Buddhist. And so they were really just existing in a state of quarreling amongst themselves and insulting each other. They had no uh, notion of coming together, uh, uniting among themselves for the benefit of the teachings. But each of these uh, different groups of Buddhists, it seems, thought that they were acting in the best interests of their own religion. They thought that they were, their their actions, their uh, slandering or insulting of the others was for the benefit or the preservation of Buddhism as they saw it. But in actual fact, their behavior, what it, uh, constitutes uh, that which is, uh, goes precisely against turning one's mind uh, to the pure Dharma. That is, uh, through the Dharma, they were generating anger, they were generating pride and slandering each other. So not only uh, in this kind of situation do the people not act uh, in their own benefit uh, or act in a way that is conducive to attributing uh, to achieving liberation, but through their accumulation of negative karma, uh, set themselves up to descend to the lower realms. <laughs> Sharshogra,Kalayana,Nushalayin,Yin,Yin,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,Tang,
But rather than reducing these negative emotions of pride and anger and desire, we simply make them increase. So this kind of thing is uh, the opposite of what we say uh, or what is held with the first Dharma of uh, Gampopa, which involves granting blessings to turn to the pure and sacred Dharma. So when we say with this first Dharma of Gampopa, uh, which I should add probably should be translated as to grant blessings to turn our mind from worldly wrongdoing to the correct dharma. Um, uh, what this first dharma means is that we need to uh, practice the correct teachings. And when we refer to Dharma in this context, the uh, pure Dharma, this is um, a uh, tradition of methods for eliminating afflictions and for advancing compassion and wisdom in our minds. And uh, if, however, we use the Dharma or take the Dharma to generate emotions such as anger, hatred, and pride, then uh, this is, uh, uh, this is, this goes against or this uh, is countervailing the pure or correct Dharma. And when we talk about the correct Dharma, this is uh, this entails maintaining a uh, proper uh, level of uh, or an appropriate level of attachment to those things in our lives, such as our material riches, our power, our fame, and so forth. However, if through our Dharma practice, our attachment to uh, material things and uh, worldly pursuits only grows, and if through our practice of the Dharma uh, among uh, Dharma followers themselves, hatred and anger are generated, then this is Dharma that goes against the practice of the pure Dharma. Of course, this is not to say that for uh, newcomers to Buddhism or beginners that they uh, and may not have any level of attachment to uh, material wealth, position, power, or fame. Uh, this is not what is, this is not what is being said. Then in that so same kind of that, then the pamjur da, then the so so mangjur da, then the top tang wangcha, they so much talk about jamba, then the jiang, then the mena, then in that so same the tongban da word is. However, if we have uh, no pursuit for anything other than our own wealth and reputation and power, then our minds are really empty. 
Then it seemed to know that in the Jiang Mini, the need of a tomba, the need in the Chasona, the need or Dumra Halipa Mombo Yung to shower gun or drip of government to use it. And if our minds become empty in this way, then we give rise to a great deal of suffering and we're not able to achieve anything. So it's just like a car not having a driver. Of course, without a driver, a car can't go anywhere. And in just the same way, when our minds become empty, then we become without pursuit and uh, a sense of purpose. If we uh, excessively strive after things like material wealth and reputation, then one day our minds will become uh, very tired, exhausted. So at this point, when our minds become exhausted or tired of pursuing these things, then we need a level that is somewhat higher uh, for our minds to pursue. We need things of a, of a higher level to strive for. So if we get to a point where our striving for various uh, worldly things uh, brings our mind uh, to a point of tiredness, but there is nothing beyond this for us to strive for, then uh, we feel uh, very empty. Uh, life uh, seems as though it has no meaning whatsoever. These days among people who really enjoy absolutely excellent standards of living, there are many who uh, nevertheless feel that life has no meaning whatsoever. Tambo uh, so the, at, the, at the beginning, uh, for if a person is uh, not so well off, then in terms of uh, their clothes and what they eat, then they're relatively easily satisfied. They think, oh, this is okay, this is, this is enough. Then it is what you Jini. However, once they, or if in the beginning they were lacking these things, uh, then once they attained them, then their way of thinking would start to give rise to change. Then it is that Mm. 
Tini tonda mindu samgere. Oh, tini ti kapsu tini ta zaki ya poyo kunji ya poyo na ta tonda mendek samgwa. Ya po yungkin tu sogo tonda mendek samgwa. So in the uh, at the in the beginning stage, a person uh, without these things would think it was rather um, of meaning uh, to have uh, good clothes and good things to eat. However, once they had actually attained these things um, and achieved them, then they would uh, Start stop feeling that that was so meaningful. They would their way of thinking would change. Then it di kafs then it angat sola kang go yorzina zaji da kunji da then it long ngubu then it long shun the mainbi then it rambang thumbu jang ko ope na sham yonji da then it sherb da wa oh then it di kafs then it go yor it don't near go yor is di kafs. So at this point, when uh, these things, material things, cease to be of uh, meaning and interest, we need pursuits of a higher level. Uh, things like compassion and wisdom, pursuits such as these. It's at this point that we really need the Dharma. If at this point there is no dharma there for us to pursue, then uh, people fall into a state of um, despondence, uh, exhaustion in their minds, not knowing what to do. Then it decaps it in its true go rete, you know, the Angasutini, Penat, and Jitinga Sholat, and Jimbatsa, and the Mipat, and this young marriage decaps. Even though at this point we do need the Dharma, uh, it's not possible uh, just at this stage uh, for uh, everyone to have no attachments to worldly things whatsoever. Then you know, decaps it in its shoot in the Tondo Niria, then this Yona, then it shoot the young Tapazit in Yamsel and Tasona. However, if at this point uh, one is able to practice the true and proper Dharma, then it can bring great benefit. There are some people who say that the practice of Buddhism is of uh, benefit to our future existences. And they think that it isn't of great benefit to this present existence. Mm. But this is completely not true. Mm. With the exception of the Dharma and the Dharma alone, there is nothing uh, from this life that can benefit our next life. So therefore, to say that practicing the Dharma is of benefit to our next existences is, of course, true. However, it isn't the case that our Dharma practice is only of benefit to future existences. It's also of uh, great benefit to our minds in this very current existence. It's if we are able to really practice the true and correct Dharma that it is able to be of benefit to us. So if we are not able to turn from improper actions to a correct way of practicing the Dharma, then not only will we fail to achieve happiness, but our, we'll also give rise to great suffering. Uh, 
but there are cases of uh, where people um, through the Dharma or using the Dharma cause harm to others. There are many cases in history of uh, people using religion uh, to uh, cause great harm amongst each other. And from a Buddhist perspective, all of this kind of action is uh, completely contradictory to the teachings. Uh, and in cases such as this, we actually uh, are using the Dharma, or um, yes, using the Dharma to accumulate negative karma. Uh, there are also many cases where uh, wars are waged on the basis of religion. Mm. And not just actual wars, but also very violent incidences that take place on the basis of religion. But uh, from a Buddhist perspective of, look- of looking at things, all of these uh, incidents are completely contradictory to the Dharma. So if uh, Buddhism is used to cause harm to others or to give rise to a great many negative emotions in the mind, then this goes against this first Dharma, which is to um, uh, move from improper action to the pure or correct Dharma. Of course, when we just look at this line of the text on the surface, um, to um, move uh, from improper action to uh, the correct Dharma, it seems very easy. It doesn't appear as something that is extremely vast and deep in scope. However, it's extremely important that this takes place at the level of our experience. So, for example, in Buddhism, we have the uh, southern school, the tradition of the southern school. We have the Chinese Buddhist tradition, the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. And each of these traditions originally um, developed in their own place. So Tibetan religion, Tibetan Buddhism developed in Tibet, Chinese Buddhist, Buddhism developed in China. Uh, but then slowly, gradually, each of these lineages, lineages or traditions are uh, spread all over the world. Uh, but in terms of the origin of each of these traditions, uh, it was none other than India. So because of this, it's really important that everyone is uh, friendly and harmonious and uh, help and cooperate with each other and support each other. And uh, by doing this, it is possible for Buddhism to serve many people. And 
the Shakyamuni Buddha's own uh, thought or vision was that his teaching should be of service to all beings. Uh, the nation of India that existed at the time uh, of the Buddha was not as large as it is today. It was made up of uh, much, uh, many smaller nations. And the uh, kings of many of these smaller nations um, had faith in the Buddha. Some of these uh, royal leaders had extremely great faith in the Buddha. In those days, the uh, largest or form or the form of transport was to ride on an elephant. And uh, after decorating the elephant uh, very ornately, the kings would ride on the elephant. And occasionally these kings traveling on the elephants would either encounter the Buddha or the Buddha's disciples on the road. And at those times when the king would encounter the Buddha or his disciples, he didn't slowly dismount from the elephant. He uh, immediately jumped right off it. Uh, but of course, the king could hurt himself by jumping off like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Back in those days, uh, members of the uh, Buddhist monastic Sangha and uh, monastic practitioners of other traditions wore robes that were very similar. And uh, the Gilbo called the Nishatsagaris. And when he encountered these uh, practitioners in the road, the uh, king would immediately uh, prostrate. And in, no, in those days, the clothes of beggars were quite similar to those that monks wore. So occasionally the monk would come across a beggar and get down on the road and prostrate. So because it wasn't good for a king to be prostrating to a beggar, the members of the monastic sangha uh, put a symbol on their robes. So at this time, with, uh, when the various kings of these nations had such great faith in the Buddha, if the Buddha Shakyamuni himself had been uh, seeking power, then it would have been very easy for him. It would have been very easy for him to achieve power by means of these leaders. So 
So at this time, it would have been a relatively easy matter for the uh, Buddha to uh, take advantage of the power of these leaders who had faith in him to exercise uh, control over uh, the uh, place of India. However, at that time, the Buddha did not uh, participate in the political life of any of these nations or states. But the uh, kings would go before the Buddha to seek or request teachings. And at this time, the Buddha would impart advice to the different kings. He would uh, tell them uh, not to give rise to excessive desire, not to uh, collect excessive amounts of money from ordinary people, to uh, cultivate compassion. This is the kind of advice he would give. And the kind of advice that the Buddha gave the kings back in these times is something that we are still able to read about in the uh, teachings of the Buddha, the Buddhist scriptures. Uh, in the uh, in the Buddhist canon, there are ten different sutric texts uh, that revolve around the advice that was given by the Buddha to different kings. So the Buddha maintained a large distance between his uh, religious teachings and politics. So uh, the Buddha uh, gave Yang Yasuna Jigriba Kambula. Sanji Chute Tamboni, Mutsola, Wang Jiria, Tindizla, Sam Lotayo Maris, and Wang Jirshi Tindizla, Sam Lotayo Maris. So the Buddha, uh, to begin with, gave no thought to uh, using his teachings to uh, control others. Then he chose La Sam Lotan, the Munam La Jashi, Tindizla, Sam Lotayo Maris. If this wasn't what he had in mind, then what did he have in mind? Well, his intention was for the teachings to be of service to others. And uh, among his uh, among his disciples were many great Mahayana bodhisattvas such as Chenri Sig and Manjushri. And so, and each of these uh, bodhisattva disciples were. Uh, people who served everyone, and not just humans, but all beings. They were primarily people of service. So, uh, regardless of whether it is the uh, southern tradition of Buddhism or the Chinese or Tibetan Buddhism uh, tradition of Buddhism, it's really important that everyone understands the Dharma as it was taught by the Buddha in his time. So 
So if the Buddha's vision was that his teachings should be of benefit to other beings and of service to other beings, then if we uh, use the Dharma to control or dominate others or to deceive them, then this is conduct that is not in accordance with uh, practicing the Dharma in a correct way according to the first Dharma of Gampopa. And just the same if we, uh, by means of Buddhism uh, or use Buddhism to engage in fights with others, regardless of whether they're small scale or large scale, then this is conduct that is, uh, goes against, contradicts the Buddhist teachings. And is, contact, and is also conduct that is uh, not practice of the pure Dharma. And it need not necessarily be really serious kinds of fights or conflicts. Uh, Any time that we uh, say that we are practicing Dharma, but in actual fact use this behavior to harm others, then this is uh, directly uh, goes against the first Dharma of Gampopa, which is to turn from improper conduct to the practice of the pure Dharma. So when we are practicing the Dharma, we need to uh, we need to examine whether or not it is of benefit to others or not. And whether or not uh, our practice is of service to others. And uh, if our practice is of benefit and service to others, then it is uh, in accordance with the practice of the correct Dharma. But if uh, our practice is not in accordance with these goals, then it cannot be considered to be, uh, we cannot be considered to be following, um, moving from improper action to the practice of the pure Dharma. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for a real practitioner of the Dharma, not only do they not uh, uh, volitionally harm others, but even if others harm them, they don't retaliate. So there was once a Tibetan Lama who had a a great foundation in study and practice and he uh, was practicing in a hermitage in the mountain. And so as a lama with uh, a great foundation of study and practice, he didn't have uh, wonderful things to eat or nice clothes or anything like this. However, in the vicinity of his hermitage were some thieves. Uh, One day the uh, thieves came to his hermitage and uh, took all of his things. They carried them out the entrance to his cave. 
তিনি লামা সেল লারু গোলা গুম জাবসা সঙ্গে তিনি মারিয়ঙ্গুয় তিনি খরানি গুনি থাকুন At that point, the Lama had been outside meditating on the mountain, but he was just returning, and so they uh, encountered each other at the entrance to his cave. What do, you, what do you all think the Lama said to the thief at this point? <laughs> yeah. The Lama said to the thief at this point, So the Lama, uh, the thief was carrying all of the Lama's possessions on his back. So the Lama uh, examined, turned over the things he had to see what the thief had taken with him. And the thief thought that the Lama was going to take back all of the things that he had stolen. But after the Lama had rifled through the things on the thief's back a little bit, he ran straight back into his cave. And the Lama uh, said to the thief, Oh, you're missing a thing. There are a few things you didn't get. Uh, and so he brought them out and then put them on the thief's back. Mm. Mm. So for a real practitioner, this is the kind of things they do. And I think that it is possible that Gachin Rinpoche and Lamas like him might do this kind of thing. <laughs> Humble Lama practitioners do this kind of thing. But whether or not uh, those lamas that sit on elaborate high thrones do this kind of thing, it's hard to say. (laughs) It's possible that uh, these kinds of lamas would chase after the thief and hit them. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's possible that they might send their, la- their own disciples after the thief to beat it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but real practitioners wouldn't do this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is, uh, that was an example of a turning from improper proper action to practicing the pure Dharma. Uh, but you might say that if it's a bit difficult for all of us to practice in this way, And that is why uh, just before I said that even though on the surface it looks easy to turn from improper action to the true Adama, in actual fact it's difficult. As for myself personally, those Tibetan lamas who are humble practitioners, I have great faith in them. And I like, I love them very much. But I really uh, give no thought to these uh, trukuls and lamas with big titles and so forth. Uh, 
Nyamlin Yabo, she need any Lujon Yabo, she need the Dinkanga Chupa Yamchon to Sorezi, Chuchujin de Shinkende. Those practitioners who really uh, know how to uh, practice the uh, pure Dharma are those, uh, those practitioners who are very humble and uh, study, have studied very well and practiced very well. Then it's Lama that Turkunda didn't eat the Chimbos, didn't he raise your Turkunda, didn't he read in the Samna, Zena, then Aranga Samna, Taja, Emishi Samni, Tindi Samgios. But when, uh, when I hear about uh, people who call themselves Lamas or great Lamas or Chukuls, in my mind I wonder, hmm, I wonder if this is really the case. Chikshina Yingiri, Chikshina Emishi, Tindi Samgios. It's possible that it is the case, it's also possible that it might not be. This is how I think. So I don't uh, spontaneously or immediately uh, give rise to faith in these teachers. However, if I hear it said that a uh, particular lama is a modest and humble practitioner with uh, excellent study, then I uh, do give rise to faith. I immediately have a feeling of liking. Um, what does everyone think the reason for this is? Uh, the reason uh, is that uh, if they practice in accordance with the true Dharma, then they are a real practitioner. So when we say about practicing the true Dharma from a Mahayana perspective, what do we mean? So a Mahayana practitioner who is in accordance with the true Dharma is one who is completely sincere and pure-hearted in their motivation with no ulterior motive whatsoever and a sole desire to be of benefit to other beings. Uh, <laughs> So uh, if a practitioner, if a, if, a, if a practitioner is a good practitioner, is a humble practitioner and is of benefit to other beings, then uh, you uh, would be able uh, to uh, recognize, you would be correct in recognizing this person as a practitioner who is in accordance with the true Dharma. <laughs> Um, so rather than <coughs> uh, talk a lot about whether or not uh, others are good practitioners or not, uh, the most important thing is for us to examine whether we ourselves are true practitioners. And among everyone who has come here today, uh, we are all true practitioners. 
uh, this is something that we can tell or evaluate by looking at ourselves. Do we uh, use the Dharma to give rise to jealousy and anger and insult each other? Are there among uh, the students here today people who say, oh, who criticize, uh, say, Hina, people who follow the uh, Hinayana vehicle, who criticize the Mahayana vehicle, and vice versa? Are there uh, practitioners of the Sutric tra- tradition who criticize the Tantric tradition and so forth? Mm. Uh, do we participate in this kind of activity? Um, if we do, then we are not in accordance with the true Dharma. Uh, if we don't do these things, then we can be considered uh, to be in accordance with the uh, pure Dharma. So when we talk about Dharma, this is something that necessarily entails everyone being friendly and harmonious. Uh, It entails us um, exercising patience and forbearance towards others. And also entails us having understanding and tolerance for others. And also entails us having minds that are open and relaxed. And entails us having minds that are free. Uh, if through our study of the Dharma we are able to do all of these things, then this is a sign of being in accordance with the true Dharma. However, if through our continued practice of the Dharma we only generate the opposite of these things, then this is a sign of not being in accordance with the true Dharma. The real uh, Mahayana teachings are are of uh, service to others. It's not like many politicians in the world who uh, say that it's for the benefit of others, but in actual fact it's for some private purpose. Uh, The Mahayana teachings are really and truly uh, oriented to be of of service to others. So each of us uh, needs to assess whether or not we are able to practice in this way. And if we are, then this is in accordance with the true Dharma. Uh, if we can't, however, then even though we might call ourselves practitioners and other things, in actual fact, we won't be in accordance with the true Dharma. Uh, do we... Do we seek to uh, elevate our position and increase our power through the Dharma? 
Then you pay not so number, then you share shock, then you lick out, niggering, cashes, shakers. There are some people in、uh, Eastern countries who do do this kind of thing. No shock, then do your is the same to us. And there are some who say that this also takes place in the West as well. They are not men, I have got my new room, my song, I don't got two bodies. Uh, but as to whether this is the case, I'm not sure. I've only heard this; I've not seen it with my own eyes. Then it two bad is all nala yin bad ama yin bad mambo yaris. And among that which I've heard, there's many people who say things this way, and others who say that way. Then it kare is in a tang atso then lama chu yon it then wang chu karda. Then it gormo mambo then jinji yon an di yin korla then chokore then is ganda us. I've heard it said that there are some lamas who come and give. Empowerment, and say that for those who make gifts of large amounts of money, are able to sit up close near the front. If someone say gave two thousand dollars, then they would be able to sit right by the side of Kemple's table.、Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The need to talk. Then you see that Abdian Rabu Jinji mena di tholan di chosa mar ten di gosaris. But if they only gave say fifteen hundred dollars, they wouldn't be able to sit right by the table. They'd just have to sit down the front near the carpet near the stage. Then you don't talk Jing Rabu Jinji mena chosun di gosar ten di pan di gosaris. And if they gave say one thousand dollars, then they would get a first row seat over there. Then you Abdian Rabu Jinji mena money jump di gosaris. And if they only gave five hundred dollars, then they'd have to sit at the back. And as the amount of money、uh, that was given decreased, their seat would go further, further to the back. And if someone gave no money whatsoever, then they would simply close the doors on them. Then you see, na yakbo undu zici zetada. What does everyone think? Is this a good thing to do or not? The chula the ni soso the ni top tang jim tola tanga marves. Is this not a case of using the dharma to enhance one's position? Di lan the ni ye tang yun the ni lan the yun ken te la wang na ke pa ji ji top ji lan bo ji yang top ji yang marves. Those who sit to the re- left and right of the Dharma throne don't get any particular、uh, privilege in terms of receiving the empowerment. Now, so kapur kum chunda andra boyunna na halipa tharang bosona tini chunda galhep kuya mare kati nyan thap kuya mare se kapur kum chunda shuji sing hao. Yeah, then. Tharang bore sona tini yon thap kuya mare se par. Kapur kum chunda. Nikinga gogun du kembolo ina yon tit. For example, if we go、uh, very far away, then、uh, the telephone signal can't be heard. Oh yeah. Then you want to learn things about the Grand Bore Sona, want to learn more about the Grand Bore Maris. Oh, 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 let's say okay. So it's just like with a phone signal.、Uh, even if one goes a very far distance, you can still、uh, hear the telephone. And it's the same with、uh, receiving an empowerment too. There's、uh, no such thing as、uh, sitting far away and not receiving the empowerment. Yeah. Then you cover the phone. 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 Kapur kum chunda yena, then you na kapur kum chunda yosa then you changdong te la te zhi ni na te zhi kapur yapo dasaro yu jire. Of course, with the phone signal, if you are、uh, closer to the signal, then the sound is of a better quality. Then you wang lan te la yu na te tangi po la yu na zhi zhi te ni tong jiao ma, hang bu jiao tong jiao ma re. However, in terms of receiving an empowerment, sitting right by the side has no extra benefit at all. Whether or not、uh, one receives an empowerment hinges on the faith of the student. The gormo manyo tamre ra chichi yo mare. It has no connection whatsoever with the amount of money they give. Then you ask, "Sama the lama ga wang ker? Then you lama so wang jiyong? Then you ask, 'Dina wang ker ke yore? Shawa de ask ko shawa so de kang re zina sama la wang yak bo thobi a tere as.'" 
So when uh, students request an empowerment and a lama comes to uh, give an empowerment, the task at hand is ensuring that everyone receives the empowerment properly. So if it's of uh, no benefit to receiving the empowerment, or well, sitting right by the side of the throne is of no benefit to the empowerment being effectively received. Uh, through practices such as these, disciples only give rise to pride. Uh, it's not helping them to dispel pride. Uh, they only think that, uh, well, I'm here, I'm sitting up high, I gave a lot of money, I'm... Uh, oh, oh, I'm, I'm different to everybody else. This is how they think. And so they give rise to pride, don't they? All of these kinds of practices are completely contradictory to uh, moving from improper action to the practice of the pure Dharma. So those who give more money wear different clothes. They wear special clothes. So the go down to us. To us. Ah. Oh, yeah. The name. Yang the name Gormo Tate and Yon Yung Tranquilla. Yang the name Yang Comba Pena Yang Ndo. Yang Zamba Dow Tindy Jun Jindus. And those who make donations of a slightly lesser amount are given clothes of a slightly different color. Oh, yeah. The name Pena Gormo Tom Trani Tranquilla, the name Comba Siro Jun Batawa. For example, those who give donations of, say, $2,000 are given clothes of a gold color. And those who give $1,000, say, are given red clothes to wear. Uh, but if, say, someone just gives $100, then they're not given any nice clothes to wear at all. <laughs> Uh, but uh, this is uh, whose invention is this? It is certainly not an invention of the Dharma. Uh, this doesn't exist within the Dharma. Uh, so in Taiwan, there are quite a lot of people who do this kind of thing. And over the last couple of years, when I've been to Taiwan, I've, uh, I've, I've criticized this. And made many people quite displeased. <laughs> And I uh, know that they were unhappy. However, I uh, would not say things simply to make people happy or, or like me. What I say is uh, what we, the Dharma needs. These are the things that I say. So of the four dhammas of Gampopa, this first line uh, of the text is extremely important. 
Then you choo choo in the machina, chuki la ransom rose, then you not so yam the goalen gores. So to turn to the proper Dharma and uh, practicing improper Dharma leads to, uh, or to the lower realms, these two we need to understand, uh, understand together. We need to put these two together. So things like this, uh, those that have just been described, are really uh, actions that are not in accordance with the true Dharma. So it's really important that as students of the Dharma, we understand that these kinds of actions are in uh, contradiction with the true Dharma. So uh, the purpose of Buddhism's uh, of, the, of Buddhism's service is uh, not uh, for the sake of acquiring objects and uh, and and material things, wealth. Of course, if we have these things to give to others, it's fine for us to give them. Of course, if we, if we do have these uh, things, objects or wealth to give to others, it's good, it's important, we're able to help a lot of poor people. However, primarily what uh, Buddhism gives to others is uh, the gifts of compassion and wisdom uh, rather than material things. So it's very important that everyone understands exactly what Buddhism is. There are many people who think that all these various kinds of actions are Buddhism. The benefit uh, that uh, Buddhism brings others is taking by taking wisdom and compassion to be of service to others. So if we are able to succeed in doing this, then we have uh, succeeded in uh, practicing or turning to the practice of the pure Dharma. So uh, that concludes our morning session. Uh, this first Dharma of Gampopa, turning uh, from the Dharma to the true Dharma, uh, please everyone think about carefully. It's possible that uh, by saying these kinds of things that many people might feel offended. And uh, if we uh, put these teachings online, it's, uh, even more people will become offended. Uh, <laughs> However, on behalf of Gampopa, I apologize to everyone for this. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, the So we'll uh, finish the uh, morning's teaching here. And we'll finish with a dedication of merit. By this virtue of merit, by giving